Hello everyone, today in this video I will be discussing with you all the super important questions which are most expected from exam point of view from the industrial safety uh, subject open elective and uh, if you watch this video till the end you will get to know all the key concepts you need to know and write uh, with remembering the least content and how to elaborate it all the diagrams I will be discussing in depth so make sure you watch this video till the end and uh, Hit the like button, subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. I'll come up with more videos like this for you. And let's get started with the first uh, module. And before starting, just uh, make sure that I have few things to tell to you. If you are uh, like, uh, see, industrial safety is a very easy subject. There is nothing has to be understood there. Okay, you just have to know the uh, ways to keep the things in the mind. Okay, so that's what I'll be discussing. I'll not be uh, discussing the explaining anything to you. I'll be just telling you how do you memorize those things. Okay. And if you want, you can just download this document and now only exit the video because I'm not going to explain anything. I'll be just telling you what are the tricks you need to use to keep in mind. Okay, so you might think like I'm just reading the points, but yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And uh, that's what how you remember the points just by reading it. Okay, so uh, let's get started. Anyways, whoever wants to watch will watch. Whoever doesn't watch, just doesn't watch. <coughs> that's upon you. So let's get started. The module one consists of the things regarding the um general safety uh, measures okay like uh, introduction to safety like that you can tell what all happens in the industry and um, what all you need to do you uh, to avoid that okay so in this whole subject i'll be telling you just four things you need to keep in mind to answer any questions from this uh, whole subject okay what are those four things is that uh, the subject is industrial safety right so uh, in the safety whenever they ask you what are the measures you need to take to become safe and what are the precautions you need to take what are the causes of some accident or something the four things you need to remember is that first you have to be aware of what all the things are okay that's the first thing you need to have the knowledge of what all the things are happening and you have to protect yourself okay you have to wear the equipments take up the measures to protect yourself first and then you have to uh, the second thing is whatever you are handling what are the materials you are handling or whatever the environment you are working on that should be safe okay the material what you are handling is it working in a proper condition or not is it in the uh, is it having the safety uh, material on top of it or not whether you are working with your bare hands all those things you need to keep in mind that's the second point and the environment you are working on is that environment safe for you are you working under a big uh, machine which can fall on you at any time those things you will be taking measure of that's the second point third point is are you uh, spreading awareness to everyone and the other workers and all like what are the uh, things that are uh, dangerous so that the others lives will also get, get saved do not be that selfish that you will be just keeping take caring of yourself that's a very idiotic person you have to uh, make sure that your co-workers and everyone who is working with you are uh, make sure that they are safe and they know what are the things that is happening if anyone is going into a danger it is your responsibility if you have seen it you have to go and save them that's the third point saving the other workers and making them aware of the rules and regulations what all they need to avoid what all you are putting upon yourself that you have to uh, tell to them also we make them wear the personal equipment tell them also to tell others to uh, become safe all those things you have to do the fourth and the last thing is whenever you are doing something you should be competent at all you should know what you are exactly doing or else you should be having someone who is monitoring you or a supervisor uh, or someone who will be helping you at the time if uh, something happens to you they will be calling the emergency that uh, someone should be there uh, who will be monitoring you and they will be assisting you if you need any uh, anything you should not take much risk in uh, picking up things and all and you should have some document or the uh, data sheet or something wherein the information should be uh, written off how to handle the things and all and you should also make sure that you have to be in the industry where the standard rules and regulations are followed all the equipments which are present there those are up to date and nothing expired is used nothing uh, old uh, stuff is used all those things okay so uh, if you remember these four things you can easily elaborate whatever the question they ask because most of the questions revolve around these things only only the topics change the regulations and everything remains same if i take an example if they ask about the fire precautions think about these four things how can you save yourself from fire how can you make everyone aware of what are the fire regulations how can you check that what causes fire is it uh, correct or not correct or not means what device is causing fire whether it is due to leakage of um, 
पेट्रोल फ्रॉम समवेयर और इज इट ड्यू टू द इलेक्ट्रिसिटी ऑल दोज थिंग्स यू नीड टू कीप इन माइंड दैट वॉट एवर यू आर हैंडलिंग एंड डूइंग इट इज सेफ और नॉट एंड यू शुड बी एबल टू इन्फॉर्म द सुपरवाइजर्स और द पर्सन हु आर नेक्स्ट लेवल टू यू अबाउट दीज थिंग्स हैपनिंग इन द इन द इंडस्ट्री दे शुड ऑल्सो बी नोइंग वॉट ऑल इट्स हैपनिंग एंड दे शुड बी एबल टू मेक चेंजेस टू इट दो सारे थिंग्स फॉर द फायर इफ दे आस्क अबाउट द मैकेनिकल डिवाइजेस इफ दे आस्क अबाउट द इलेक्ट्रिकल डिवाइजेस इफ दे आस्क अबाउट द केमिकल्स ऑल दीज थिंग्स दे आर फाइव मॉड्यूल्स टोटल फर्स्ट इज द इंट्रोडक्शन सेकेंड थर्ड फोर्थ फिफ्थ आर जस्ट अबाउट द फायर and uh, just normal uh, material safety mechanical safety and last one is about the chemicals i guess it's that's order so i'll be uh, touching some important questions and i'll be telling you what are the tricks and acronyms you need to keep in mind so that you can expect full marks for this uh, module you need not study just watch this video it's sufficient for you but nevertheless you have to go through this document once after you watch this video okay so without wasting any more time let's get started <coughs> the first uh, question is what is uh, accident safety hazard and so on okay these terms are given they can ask you for the definition explicitly at that time what you have to write is these following things just remember the first line don't read everything which is there in the document just you have to read the first line accident what is accident it is defined as a way of unplanned event just remember unplanned event accident is what it is an unplanned event you did not plan an accident accidents are never planned the incident does not happen with our knowledge it happens without our knowledge we don't plan anything in advance it happens accidentally that is that is why it is called accident and what it does and how it happens and all you can write in your own words but the main thing is it, uh, it is an unplanned event that's the main key point here next is safety safety is what the situation or a condition of being protected from danger or risk hazard means what the thing which causes danger or risk safe means what free from injury safety devices devices that ensure safety safety guard any person or thing or device that prevents injury security a sense of safety protection precaution the care or measure taken what all you are doing to keep yourself safe or others safe that is called as precaution caution is like a nothing but a warning appliance is a device which performs a specific task slip trip and fall in slip trip and fall you have some regulations and after that you have the uh, protection program as well you have to write everything about that slip means what lose one's footing and slide unintentionally for a short distance like this you'll slip trip means what you are walking and something came in between you fall then that is called as trip catch one's foot on something and stumble or fall fall means what the fall you already know like this will fall right but they need a uh, proper definition moving from a higher level to a lower level rapidly and injuring yourself uh, in most of the cases without control and these are the things like falls and trips from the elevations can uh, occur at the elevations or at the same level it can occur nevertheless the elevations is most likely the dangerous one because it's having a gravitational force as well and which is more hard that they have uh, told and it is recognized to reduce the hazards can be developed the see now you are writing in your own words like these things how it can be developed uh, to avoid the hazards and all so uh, management of the company develops and implements and enforces a comprehensive activity or a program called as fall protection program so what all those uh, protection program things uh, should consist of means that program should consist of addressing all aspects of safety just read what the first three words addressing all aspects of safety that's all identifying all fall hazards training the employees job hazard analysis providing appropriate fall protection equipment conducting scheduled and unscheduled inspection establishment of medical safety encouraging workers if you don't uh, think like if you are just reading it out you will not remember anything don't remember anything you watch this video just till the end you will get to know all the key points because that many times these same things will be repeated okay and what is next fall from the buildings or the structures permanent structures member should be developed across the structure complete person who knows about those things should be there he should routinely uh, inspect and observe all the protective equipments plant and operator should be identified in the areas if it's on the same level what all should be done the same things again i'll be just reading this even if it is same because if the if you watch this video till the end you'll hear the same thing repeatedly it will be staying in your head okay so if you feel bored you can just skip uh, and uh, go more to the next question if you think you have got the points in the mind otherwise uh, keep listening identify the factors that contribute first we have to what identify the factors what is causing the uh, faults and all good house cleaning regular cleaning and workflow should be maintained use slip resistant foot so that you only don't get slipped floor crack should be made proper manual handling of the material should be there inspection should be there for the area where you are uh, working that was about the first question different types of key terms you have to explain moving on to the second question we have the safety measures for ladders and scaffolding ladders we all know scaffolding means what see when a building is constructed at that time many like these things will be there no like these things and you will be working uh, 
means the workers will be going like this up and all and they'll be standing at some platform and if this work is over they'll go up with the wooden and the um, threads they'll be not threads rope yeah with the ropes and all they'll be making those things are called scaffolds okay you can google it you'll see the image okay so uh, what are the guidelines we are slip resistant the four things i told you remember those four things make yourself safe make sure everyone is safe and the environment is safe and the thing which you are working is proper and there should be a person who is observing you keep the area clean we are appropriate fall protection program which is ppe again never carry large objects that's about your responsibility keep both hands free for climbing or coming down hand should not have anything other how how you'll come down you'll fall down like something face the ladder and maintain three point contact two hands and one foot okay two hands one foot do not overload the ladder otherwise the ladder will break scaffolds to for the footing for the scaffold should be rigid it should be very rigid the footing and all otherwise you will be falling from there itself loose bricks should not be used guard rail should be used damaged part should be repaired or replaced a competent person should be there employee should be trained for climbing the scaffolds moving on we have the third super important question which is what are the unsafe acts and the reasons for accidents unsafe acts are what again the four things you have to remember about yourself the environment the other people and the competent person should be observing you unsafe what are the unsafe activities inadequate mecha- mechanical guarding defective equipment the equipment itself is defective so the accidents might happen unsafe design the design was not proper it was something rubbish hazardous process or inadequate illumination inadequate ventilation unsafe dress loose clothing and all and working unsafely performing operation without supervision the fourth point the removing the safety devices operating at unsafe speeds use of unsafe tools teasing and abusing working under the alcoholic uh, influence or failure to use safe clothes or personal protective equipment personal factors uh, such as uh, improper attitude like ego problem lack of knowledge and skills faulty vision and poor hearing what are the reasons of accidents the reasons and the cause uh, causes and uh, what are the uh, unsafe act everything is same okay answer is same there is no difference in that lack of knowledge lack of safety aspect lack of commitment to safety lack of control lack of education or training lack of teamwork lack of discipline lack of social responsibility failure to learn from the past mistakes failure to employ the correct people failure to identify critical components lack of safety policy absence of safety officer at the workplace lack of changing the uh, bad things and making the environment correct and the lack of spreading awareness like that you can write by own words as well moving on you have the fourth supplement one question what is msds material safety data sheet is the most important question from the module one material safety data sheet and its significance what do you understand with the material safety data sheet in material safety data sheet will be having something which is about the materials how to handle those materials uh, in a safe manner so what are the things you need to keep in mind is uh, there is a shortcut hppp f r um something is there f r f r t p f okay h triple p f r t p f <coughs> h triple p f r t p f okay this is what you have to remember h means what hazard i'll just go to it h triple p f r t p f repeat with me h uh, triple p f r t p f hazardous ingredients the information about the hazardous ingredients should be there on this uh, material safety data sheet preparation information how is the um, who prepared the material data sheet how it was prepared those information should be there product information what all it cont- contains or the lab laboratory or the industry that uh, data should be there physical data what are the properties of the data which is present that should be there fire and explosion if fire and explosion happens what should be done why fire and explosion can happen what all we should avoid those things will be there reactivity data what reacts with what that uh, that data will be there toxicology properties how toxic the uh, substances are what are the harmful effects of chemical exposure how to prevent the stuffs from ha- prevent the incidents from happening first aid measures what are there you need to keep in mind those are the things written here done um, h triple p f r t p f it will be easy to remember in this way next we have the question which is osha and who osha means what uh, occupational health and safety uh, who means what world health organization in o- osha means what it will be again it will be revolving around the four things again about you your workers environment and some prominent person should be there to see the um, see you working and about the materials and the things which are used uh, about those things okay so i'll be just reading the key points it's responsible for protecting the workers health ensure safe and healthy and numerous rules and industries are there 
and offer the training and uh, tools and explain the procedures and it requires employees to follow the rules and following the safety regulation wearing required protective uh, equipment this much only you have to treat you have to not treat everything just remember very less content write it in your own words because this is a very easy uh, subject and wh also in, you can write in your own way just about the health term you have tried what all we can write it was formed in 1948 uh, it was in geneva and it controls the international project to eliminate the diseases and it can provide the information also and making the people aware of what all they need to do for the major diseases taking care of maternal and child health improving sanitation and water supplies okay these are the key points you have to write for the uh, who Moving on, we have the very easy and very important uh, question, which is explain the lockout and tagout procedures. What are the uh, lockout and uh, lo lockout and tagout procedure? Lockout means what you are locking it out. Whatever the thing is, I'll show you the image here. You are locking it out, okay, so that it is not to be used. Tagout is also the same thing. We just once uh, you should not go here. It is tagged out, okay, like that. No one is there. You should not be operating uh, without any competent person. Lockout is a lock used to hold energy in isolation device so that no one can use it. Tagout is uh, when a tag is placed on top. Lockout means lock is there. Tagout means tag is there. That's all. Explain material, safe material handling and storage analysis. How do you handle the material safely and how do you store the things uh, safely so that the incidents does not happen. Material handling does not add any value but it can add value to uh, uh, someone's life and harm. Okay, like it will become more intense if material is not handled properly. It accounts to 36% of the production costs. 50 to 100 tons of material are handled and rehandled every ton of finished product. Two fifths of the cycle time is spent on handling. 20 to 80 percent of the total labor cost goes in labor uh, handling, and 30 to 40 percent of the industrial accidents are caused due to the handling materials. If the materials are not proper, if you handle it, then obviously the person who is handling it might get affected by that. And uh, what about the factors affecting the handling of materials? Weight, size, shape, rate of handling, distance to be moved, purpose of moving, obstacles in the pathway, mechanical aids or equipment which can use to keep yourself safe while handling the materials, hand tools, rollers, trucks, hoisting, overhead conveyor, shovel, elevator, pipeline pumps for liquids. What are the unsafe work habits? Lifting improperly, carrying too heavy load, unsafe gripping, failure to wear personal uh, protective equipment. These all things you can write in your own words. That was about the module one. Let's move on to the module two. The first question, th these are all about the fires. What are the different types of fires? Fire extinguisher, what are the measures you need to take for saving from the fire? What are the fire hazards? How the fire co gets caused? What to do when some fire happens? How to use the extinguisher? Those are the main concepts in this module. So let's discuss each one by one. The different classes of fire and what are the extinguishers used? Super important question from my exam point of view. What is the class A fire? That is a normal fire like the fire on the solid material such as wood, coal, plastic, cloth, paper, racks and uh, rubbish and uh, construction like a very uh, normal fire what happens right and further what is the solution obviously we'll put water first so water um, extinguisher is the solution for this one. Next we have class B fire where we'll be having uh, the fire involving the flammable liquid vapor or transformer oil, diesel oil, like those kind of stuff, okay, liquid type of fire. In that case you cannot use the uh, water, at that time you have to use dry chemical or the CO2 or limiting the oxygen, okay, like that thing you have to use, the gaseous ones. C is the about the electrical equipment uh, due to that if it happens you cannot use water because water is a good conductor of electricity CO2 gas or dry chemicals you can use D is the metal and metal alloys the fire due to metal and metal alloys special chemicals are used the other normal extinguishers are not used you have to use what special chemicals E is the ones which is about the ammonia acetylene LPG furnace oil like the oil kind of stuffs and all and K is also about the oil stuff and for both what you will be using is um, the normal extinguishing uh, materials, special techniques uh, are used without using the normal extinguishing materials. Okay, so exactly which kind of fire extinguisher are used? That is discussed in a separate question. Uh, what are five different types of extinguisher? We'll get to know in depth. So stay tuned till that <coughs> for this. Uh, this and for you. So uh, brief overview: If it is a class A fire, we can use water, foam, dry powder, CO2. We can't use and wet chemicals. We can use. Okay. If it is class B fire, we will have like petrol kind of stuff. You cannot use water. You have to use foam, dry powder, or CO2. If it is uh, like about the gases, okay, like methane and butane. At that time, you have to use dry powder gas only, and other can't be used. Okay, dry powder gas. If it is lithium and potassium, like the fats and all, you can use dry powder here also. If it is electricity, you can use dry powder or CO2. If it is regarding the deep fat, 
like the animal fat or the vegetable fat you have to use the wet chemicals okay so you can go through it for more information next we have the super important question which is explain the concept of fire triangle what is fire triangle fire triangle means fire happens due to three main components fuel oxidizing agent and heat if heat is there and fuel is there and oxidizing agent is there at that time only you will be having the fire or else fire will not be there so what is the way to handle the fire is cut off either fuel or heat or oxidizing agent then the fire will go this is what the main concept you have to explain what each thing is and how do you uh, remove each of these what are the examples for each of these and when these three things occur what is the best to remove in which all situations okay this you have to write now onwards i cannot explain that thing okay that's very very simple one explain five types of fire extinguisher the first one we have is water extinguisher the properties of it is you'll be having a red label here okay in red color it will be written water and uh, for what all it is used it is used for organic materials paper and cardboard fabrics and textile wood and coal organic and coal the next one we have is the foam type of extinguisher the uh, label will be cream color label foam uh, thing is used uh, for the paper and cardboard fire uh, fabrics and textile wood and coal flammable liquids mainly for paint and petrol third one we have dry powder extinguisher you have the blue label and what all uh, it is used it is called as abc why it is abc it extinguishes a fire b fire and c fire okay like the normal fire and the b means the um, b was about the petrol and c is about the electricity all, for all these three it can be used okay and uh, some of the things are written organic material like the paper fabric wood flammable liquid flammable liquid fire involving the equipment up to 1000 volts specialist dry powder okay carbon dioxide uh, you can find it uh, like uh, black here and this is mainly used in the computer systems if any fire comes in a computer lab and all that time you'll be using this one okay and for wet chemical here you will have golden label and wet chemical is used for cooking oil and all okay metal oil is cooking oil for those things then that was about the different kind of fire extinguishers and moving on we have the next question which is how does fire hazard happen what are the steps and uh, to protect and avoid such okay how does fire happen fire happens due to the following things it's written some things here electrical arc loose connections welding spark bursting capacitor fire explosion of the oil field and fuel for the power generation for these things the fire will happen and what are the steps to avoid it so it's just written what is fire hazard fire hazard means if fire comes what will happen everything will burn what all you can think that all things you mention and tell it all burns okay like house paper money and book laptop everything okay even the person and animal everything fire hazard analysis is the method of evaluating the fire hazard okay fha is what fire hazard analysis it is a way of evaluating the fire hazard fire fire prevention means how do you prevent the fire about that it is written how do you prevent the fire by cutting off either the combustible material air or the heat local equipment or the spark ignition okay by using these things you can eliminate the fire what to do if the fire happens that's another question the first step is the fire occurs it is detected by an observer or a detection system alarm is sounded electrical power supply and other fuel supply are switched off immediate use of portable fire extinguisher water and sand extinguisher is used automatic fire system gets initiated call for, uh, call the fire brigade and persons vacate the place okay very simple in every movie this happens and all we will be we all obviously know what happens when fire happens what are the steps happening okay explain the various fire detection alarm systems uh, interesting and a sweet question here we have the first one fusible glass bulb detectors here what will happen if it is uh, like um, heat happens at that time water will come from here when water will come from here it will come till here with full speed and this is a glass bulb this will get broken if this gets broken the water will come from here the water will come from here everything it will be coming and uh, from there what will happen it will be spreading all over the places and it will be uh, extinguishing the fire so those are the things uh, th that was about the fire detector and how it um, saved the detection of fire rate of temperature rise detector the mercury is the uh, metal which will be also in the form of a liquid right so if the heat uh, rises it will become a liquid type uh, mercury so because of it being liquid it will start conducting electricity and the uh, fire will be detected means temperature has right mercury became liquid and it will start conducting heat sensitive cables it will be something as follows here here the heat will be sent and in between them there will be a dielectric when heat is rise it will become conductive and it will uh, conduct electricity and produce alarm sound smoke and heat detector 
so here if smoke or heat will come it will be uh, coming inside the particles will go inside of it and it will be detecting it and it will cause some sound heat sensitive fire detection ca uh, canopies here also there is a canopy um, fit fitted on top of the um, home at that time when the fire comes it will uh, go inside that and it will increase some voltage or something and it will just uh, do it okay right now onwards whatever you think next we have the uh, last question we, i i don't think so it is last question anyways explain the usage of portable fire extinguishers so this is how you need to uh, make the fire extinguisher what all we have here the four main things you have to keep in mind is this is the pin which will be pulling okay and this is the nozzle by using which you will be spreading the fire and this is where all the things will be stored and this is the thing which will be squeezing like this and putting the fire for remembering these four things you have to remember this acronym pass pass is what pull aim squeeze sweep the name is sufficient pull the pin aim wherever you have the fire squeeze it and then sweep it like this then fire will go okay that was the last question i was uh, my guess was right moving on to the third module we have about the electricity um not electricity we have about the materials okay like the mechanical things here uh, the question okay let's discuss it one by one identify the general personal protective equipment very important question from exam point of view and there are many uh, places in your body which you have to um, protect right so what are those head eyes face hands feet body hearing and respiratory now if you feel hard to uh, remember this just imagine yourself imagine yourself from top to bottom okay start imagining yourself from top to bottom what is there head is there on top save your head ears are there save your ears eyes is there save your eyes mouth is there save your mouth face is there save your face hands save your hands legs are there save your legs foot is there save your foot body is there save your body you are breathing the things from your nose make sure nose is covered respiratory that all of the things same things are mentioned here from top to bottom imagine yourself and think of what will happen if uh, the incidents happen and uh, how can you best protect yourself all those things you have to write so a few of the things individually are mentioned here head pp if falling object flying objects are working near the fire thing or energized thing or something like that or uh, working in a construction site this helmet is there okay head P uh, protective equipment for the eyes what all can go very sharp object or chemical can go like this or flying particles electric work for that eye for the face if something is that touch splashing okay that can protect the face for the hands if it is a uh, harmful substance or the chemical substance or something cuts can happen very sharp substance or high or low temperature is there for protecting hands hand gloves are there for feet if something very heavy falls on feet your feet will go no that's why you have to wear what feet pp after that we have the body pp to cover your body from the different kinds of things like the chemicals and all sharp objects and all so those are the things about the pp hearing pp if it's very loud sound your ears will go okay that's why you have to wear the things like this which will be covering your ears and nothing you will be able to hear respiratory pp you have to have something if it is harmful gases you are uh, working upon or something like dust particles can go inside your nose so it can be harmful to your lungs so you have to uh, wear respiratory pp as well next question we have what are some of the mechanical and workplace hazards okay so uh, yeah these are these are the things common sense you can understand what are the different types of mechanical and workplace hazard crushing hazards some things will be there the machines it can it will like crush you okay so how do you keep safe from it just be aware of the things where crushing is happening don't go near it okay like this is the crushing one if you are sitting here and this comes here then what you will become like chutney only and shear hazards if something is here you will be coming here and your uh, stomach will be hurt okay that is shear and this is the cutting and uh, sorry not cutting crushing hazards and the next one is the cutting hazards or severing hazards in cutting hazards there will be blades which are working with a uh, very increased uh, speed due to that the hand or the other uh, body part could come in between and it will be causing the injury so that is called as cutting or severing hazards drawing or trapping like for the mouse we keep right and if you only come in, in uh, instead of the mouse you will only get caught okay that is called as uh, drawing in or trapping hazards stabbing or puncture hazards like some gas will be punctured inside your skin and the gas will go and something will happen inside your body okay that is called as uh, puncture hazards friction or abrasion hazards due to, because of friction or something you will be getting stuck inside a machine and in entanglement hazards if a pulley is there and you put your hand inside the pulley instead of uh, using the safety your hand will also become round 
next we have the impact hazards if there is a very fast object coming and hitting your body that is called as impact hazard high pressure hazard if there is a high pressure or something like a valve or a very high compressor at that time if you put your hand inside that that all compressed gas will go inside your skin okay then many dangerous things can happen how do you remember this by common sense just imagine going to a uh, uh, industry and there someone is getting crushed, someone is getting feared, cutted and severe drawing tops, some has compressed gas inside their body and uh, friction abrasion hazard is there, entanglement, hands are getting entangled, impact is happening and high pressure fluid is going like all those things you can just imagine two or three times in your brain and you will remember these things right. <clears throat> so that was about the second question moving on to the third question what is forklift hazard so basically what is a forklift you will be having a machine like this which will be used to pick up the stuffs okay so let's have a look what are the hazards for it production factors such as speed or stress that should be maintained lack of proper tools improper assignment proper maintenance age of forklift and lack of training traveling at excessive speed riding with a load elevated like very much load is there and you are uh, putting a full high speed that is uh, not proper improper backing up improper turning warning to others poor communication not being aware of the route to be traveled riding parking improper blocking horseplay inadequate servicing of the forklift okay safety with uh, working with lathe drill press power band source grinding machine five things are there for all water the safety i'll quickly go through the key points you just have to hear it once for lathe lathe means what a machine which produces lath okay keep the machine clean and tidy always wear appropriate safety glasses roll up the sleeves never wear ring or watches don't operate lathe under un until you understand the control and uh, if the safety guards are removed don't operate it stop lathe before the uh, working or cleaning with it don't use rack to clean rack can get caught and drag inside that see rag will get caught then your hand will also get caught you will also get caught never attempt to uh, stop a lath uh, check be sure to make the face plate mounted and always use the chuck key move the carriage to the fast position don't work very near to it always remove the chips with the brush and keep the floor free from the material or the grease or else you'll slip and go inside the lathe machine and uh, polishing and the finishing everything should be done properly with the drill plus what is the thing uh, make sure you uh, hold a clamp securely to the table always keep your finger at least four inches away from the rotating tool always remove the chuck key from the starting machine measure safety should be there precaution safety goggle proper dressing use sander safety means just wearing mask here avoid touching of the drill tools cutting tools and ensure the safe accessories and risk from children uh, so children should be made uh, away from it keep away your hands from the drilling tool last but not the least top 10 uh, safety procedure should be followed uh, for the so our better uh, safe uh, conduction of um, industrial visit and uh, safety while using power source power source means our soil will be there which will be um, automatically generated by some electricity or something so mount the work or soil stop see do the work when soil stopped and clean the uh, blade if possible and clamp with respect to securely clamp whatever work you are doing do it securely make sure it is in good condition and the speed should be maintained very well Keep hands away out of it and uh, stand out of the line with the blade and abrasive, not bend the um, saw. Bend saw also, we have the same thing, don't use a hand to clean the steps or pushing the material, use a stick to do that. And relief cut should be made, means it should be made very uh, smoothly and waste side of the uh, machine should be done on every um, waste material. Okay. For the grinding machine. Wheel guard should be properly fitted, machine body should be without damage, moving part should be properly fixed, grinding machine should be of suitable size, machine running without abnormal sound that should be ensured, helmet, safety goggle, everything whatever you can protect yourself with that you have to wear, fixing the grinding wheel with the machine haphazard manner without using the proper spanner, over pressing the grinding wheel against the job should be avoided. Avoid keeping the main switch on when the switch is on at that time don't operate the machine more roughly. Do not drag the machine by the cable. Okay. So that was about the different types of machine and the safety. Next we have explained safety during welding, forging and pressing. Welding means what? You will be doing that metal thing right? Melting and uh, doing thing. Forging means changing its shape. Pressing means just pressing the materials. So think accordingly. If you are pressing or changing the shape or just uh, giving it a different shape at that time what are the safety pressures giving it a different shape don't put your hand while giving it a different shape otherwise your hand will also become that shape right 
that was the thing and pressing means don't keep your hand or stay away from it don't uh, wear loose clothing otherwise cloth will go along with that you will also be forced to go inside that same things are mentioned don't worry nothing is different here now we are a proper face shield if material come and hit your face what you will do close to long sleeve should not be wear non flammable um, shirt should be worn always wear proper uh, welding gloves wear ear protection and keep the welding fables uh, free of oil grease and all and should be in good condition welding should be done properly in a ventilated area combustible material should be used and arc should not be looked with a neck ties and uh, forging also the same things are there avoid uh, using the damaged hammers never try to strike a hardened surface with a hardened tool use the hammers properly to harden it and uh, use it properly when something gets flying you should protect yourself wear the uh, safety equipment make the clean area and all everything should be clean the area should be clean in the hammer which you are wearing that should, uh, the hammer which you are holding and using that should be of proper quality and that should also be clean and should be in a separate place where it is safe and you should use it from a particular distance you should not go very near to it and you should have the knowledge of what other things are there and proper safety guard should be provided to all the rotating or revolving parts head of the chisel should be free from the burst okay so any 5 or 6 you can write that should be sufficient safety during pressing uh, be secure so that employee can't remove them be sturdy in a good condition protective uh, protection is provided no sharp edges should be there no don't interfere with the work safe lubrication should be there that is about the pressing moving on we have the six super important question which is about the safety of handling material and gas cylinder so what is uh, see handling material means what the material is there you are handling it well or not that is about the handling of the material and gas cylinder gas cylinder how do you handle it okay th those things are there and why is material handling important more than 50% of the accidents happen due to the uh, improper handling of the materials it causes injury to the damaged property and the human and the other materials as well it adds to a lot of cost and the safety precaution should be taken to handle the material safely so what are the um, factors for it this already we discussed right what are the different 2 by 5 80 percent and uh, add to the cost of the product and 50 to 100 tons are uh, rehandled okay so, so, th uh, this, uh, so those same things are there here also what are the factors for the selection handling and what are the uh, things you can use for the better uh, mechanical aids and um, to save yourself and do the stuff properly same things are there i don't think so i should repeat this one okay uh, so i think i ask you explicitly safety while handling the crane crane means you know right a very big uh, material which will be picking up very heavy stuff and placing it somewhere on top of the building and all that is called a crane so let's have a look at what are the safety uh, things for crane it should be centered over the load it should not be like imbalanced load the otherwise crane will only fall it should not be overloaded it should be operated smoothly the hook block should never be lowered brake should be checked very well immediate area should be cleared off of people people should not be there before shifting a load lift a heavy load enough uh, initially and check whether everything is correct or not upper limit of the switch should be maintained suspended load should never be left unattended and electrically isolated it should not be having any cutoffs in the electric supply or it should not be uh, having the damaged wirings and all okay those things are there and we have the gas cylinder so for the gas cylinders there is a story you went into the uh, place and there is a gas cylinder okay and that gas cylinder is uh, written um, kept somewhere in a dry room and uh, sunlight is coming here okay and it uh, every electricity electricity surface very far from it and oxygen and acetylene those are separate one meter apart and they are uh, standing straight okay so these are some of the key points uh, like cylinder should be st stored in a well spaces ventilated room it should be open and uh, protected from the sun rain or contact with corrosive substance sorry i told it, it should be in the sun but it should be protected from the sun because if it gets heated it might get blasted also uh, blast also if gas cylinders are in a closed room electric switches should be very far oxygen and acetylene should be one meter apart never allow gas cylinder to come in or contact with electric appliances or live wires obviously if electric things are kept out obviously the electric appliances also we should keep safe from it right and whatever the cylindrical fittings are there the pipe leak should not happen you should uh, regularly check, uh, check for the leak, uh, leaking and all and you have to not make the cylinder very bad like writing some things on that and wall should be protected transportation should be done in a suitable manner you should not just throw the cylinders from a high distance you should roll it and um, 
you should not use the chalk to write some things and while receiving cylinder it should be have the wall protection cap okay if it is not there means uh, someone is cheating on you you are just receiving a cylinder which already someone has used uh, something okay that's why you should always check if the cap is fixed on the top of that that was about the cylinders and moving on to the seventh super important question safety while handling waste drums and containers see waste drum and containers i'll tell you a story how do you handle it okay so what all is there first let me have a look okay see for this waste drum and uh, container you have to just remember this diagram and whatever is written on top of that it's just safety precautions what all you have to do and how do you store it and all um like different kinds of things will be there no waste like chemical and all how it should be stored in a separate uh, place which is hazardous should be thrown um, normally without any corrosion and all corrosive substance how it can be made more uh, safer it should not cause harm to anyone the container in which it should kept it should not be reactive with that containers material so those things should be just maintained and there should be first aid also like the safety showers and the eye shower should be always visible and rubber things should be used to handle the stuffs and all so those are the what the corrosive substance things and handling waste domain container let's have a look at that so <clears throat> again the same thing whatever applies for the corrosive substance how do you store it it should not be reactive substance in that only the waste material should be there it should be safe from the other uh, people it should not cause harm to other people those things are there and let me tell you a story see for the handling of the waste dumps and the material um, thing right so what you have to do first is two things are there um, you have to check if the handling is there or not see handling the first step you'll be getting some uh, waste with you you'll be handling it how do you handle it first you'll get it and before handling you have to check two things if stacking is done or if planning is done if stacking is done you can just directly go for handling if stacking is not done first do stacking then go for handling if stacking you have to check first planning is done or not if planning is not done first do planning then stacking then handling okay like that handling stacking planning what is the hierarchy handling stacking and planning okay then meaning does not matter you just have to remember these keywords after that uh, when you do the handling what will happen is first you will be opening the drum and then you will be sampling it means making it into small pieces and then categorizing it means uh, different kinds of patient in different areas and after you have categorized make it uh, separate bulks and then just di uh, dispose it okay like that and this is about handling if hand if uh, the stacking is not then do stacking first then come to handling if planning is not then stacking planning then come to handling that's all the same thing is mentioned here also you can go through it once you'll get to know that's how you have to just uh, briefly keep in mind don't keep much things in mind it is simple only that was about the module 3 let's move on to the module 4 we have mainly the things about the electricity the first question explain the various electric hazards hazards means what can electricity cause how it can be more dangerous what are all the things that can happen improper grounding exposed electrical parts inadequate wiring damaged wiring wet condition damaged tools overheaded power line four things i already told you about yourself you have to protect yourself you have to check whatever is uh, going on that is protective and um, the environment is fine the equipment is fine it's not damaged and some other person competent person is observing you even if there, there is no mention of an of competent person or a supervisor is observing you while you're handling the electricity stuff it is pretty much common sense and understood that this is also a part of the precautions right even if it is not there you if you write you'll get marks done that was about the various electrical hazards moving on you have the second question which is explain the effect of electricity on human body see you the electricity is a very different concept why because um if you just use your hand to come out of electricity you cannot come out of electricity you will become a part of electricity if you start if you hold some wire like this your the current will go from your body right so you cannot just use your hands to save yourself from electricity if it is just one milliampere it will be a perception level slight tingling like your friend come and tickle you right like that sensation will happen for one milliampere if five milliampere slight shock will be there and it is not a painful but uh, disturbing if it is six to sixteen milliampere the person can if it tries he can come out of it okay but it is very hard that's the uh, maximum range if it is 17 to 99 milliampere at that time the person cannot come out of it someone has to come and use a ins insulator to bring him uh, down otherwise if you use if you only concentrate he will also become a part of electricity okay there will be no point that's called stupidity and here we have the 10 to 2000 100 to 2000 milliampere here it is very dangerous and uh, death is likely and there can be heart attack and nerve can be damaged brain can be damaged 
and the last one is about the greater than 2000 here the cardiac arrest will happen internal organ damage will happen burns will happen and death is probable okay that was about the uh, how electricity can be harmful to the humans a few more information are given like the blood circulation will be destructed hemorrhage uh, and the destruction of nerves will happen electricity passed to the body it can burn the internal organs and contraction of uh, chest muscle will be there you will be feeling heavy to breathe it and there will be breathing problems and the um, leading to asphyxiation asphyxiation means you'll be hard to breathe it and um, just that internal tissues will be burned and uh, brain nerves will be gone and you'll not be able to properly think also what you need to do it's a very dangerous situation so make sure you're always safe from electricity uh, hazards and try your best and don't uh, perform some stupid stuffs without having some protective equipment with it yourself causes of electric shock again the four things what i mentioned negligence of use of uh, negligence during the use of uh, electrical appliance naked wires high voltage low level wires children play with cords faulty appliance damage fail freight cords electrical appliance coming in contact with water water is also a great conductor of electricity okay so you should not forget that incorrect or deteriorated household wiring down power lines lighting strike children chewing on cords and poking objects into outlets and poor, poorly functioning appliances the appliances are not good if you if you touch some phone you'll get some shock right that is a very old phone and it has some electricity coming out of it down power lines near water or machinery Okay, that was about the uh, harms. Uh, no, what was it? The causes of electrical accidents. Okay, then we have about the PPE, which is the protective protection. Again, the same things are here. Start from top till bottom. Imagine yourself. How can you protect your body? That's all. And some things are given here, like uh, OSHA is a company which will be using the. It will be providing the protective equipment, uh, instructions on how to use it, and what all you you can do. From it and the locker tagout procedures are also provided and this is a diagram where it is shown like uh, if he is if a person is working with a uh, very high voltage equipment what are the stuff he has done he has worn a gloves which is protecting him from the voltage which is insulative glove eyes eyes uh, protection is there head protection is there body uh, protection is there safety boots is also there which is non-conductive okay that was about the ppe safety precaution against shocks so how do you save yourself from shocks check for damage keep electric wire equipment away from the hot surfaces do not lay electric wires know the location of switches all circuit breakers should be working properly access to circuit breakers must uh, not be blocked extension cords must be supplied do not handle electric equipment with the wet hands consider all floors and conductive unless uh, covered with insulating materials wet floor should not be there wet leg should not be there wet hand should not be there okay and possible use only one hand while working on the uh, circuits why because if you use both hand the path for the electric current will be complete and you will also become a part of electric current do not wear ring or any metallic material that will be helping in conductive of more electricity next question uh, what is the precautions in installation for residential areas in the buildings and the shops so in that case is what we need to do okay before carrying out repair uh, work or the main switch fuse holder to you until the completion of the work you should just keep sh make sure that the switches are working very well and shock proof appliance should be there fuse wire should be correct you should be maintaining a, a miniature circuit breaker do not use immersion with water heaters and uh, use good quality and replace worn out uh, wiring do not uh, allow the water leakage if water leaks it's very hard these are some of the things like other things should be done okay for the uh, residential building in the shop just imagine a shop how, how what all the ways it can have happen for the electrical accidents and all or the hazards how to make it safe just imagine like that and do okay remembering is nothing here just have to use your brain and uh, the about the uh, which is this one electrical plant okay if electrical plant is there there the first thing the key point you have to mention is the earthing earthing should be there properly then all the things which was uh, um, valid for the residential or the industrial or the safe or the houses everything will be valid here also the same things you have to write so i'm not going through it follow the safety rules see as simple as this one follow the safety rule this is also a separate point you can elaborate and write one two pages for that do that you'll get marks okay so i'm not going through it there's nothing much actually make yourself safe make sure environment is safe make sure the equipments and the switches and all everything is safe people are following the rules and everything what is there in the industry that is working fine the proper equipments are, are done you are wearing proper equipments 
everyone knows what are the rules everything okay like that you can write no in words wet thing should not be there for electricity okay that was about the module 4 very simple module and moving on to the last module we have module 5 about the chemicals let's have a look at what are the type of question that could be asked explain the acid hoods and as handling of acid acid hood means what acid hood means a uh, thing will be like this here we will be having some stuffs here and by using this it will be detecting if any chemical hazards can happen okay you have to do all your working here and when working is done the fire um, the smoke will go from here and the ash pit will be collected here and you can clean it later okay that is called as acid hoods all the ha acid handling stuff should be done there only and that is only called acid hood you can go through it what are its uh, specific features handling of chemicals just read the first three uh, words all chemical bottle must be closed after the use bench top must be used as a uh, storage area to prevent the clutter the handling of acid should be done while we are wearing the gloves and your eye thing like the specs okay so chemical formula or shortfall should not be written it should be written full form the image should also be there what will happen if you uh, make a wrong use of it and labels should also be there one out label should be removed and transporting chemicals you have to be uh, very uh, safe otherwise if some chemical gets leaked other chemical will react two reactive chemicals should not be together okay that is also one of the thing bottle carriers must be used while moving a single container a bottle, a bottle carrier is something that should be used okay so that was about the chemical acid uh, fumes and the handling of the chemicals okay next what we have is the eye washes and the shower see sometimes what happens is a uh, person gets some burn or some acid burn here here and then in the body or it can be in the eyes as well so at that time we should get a quick shower and a lot of water to wash out all the chemicals which is present in the eyes or the body that time we'll be using what eye washers and the showers so emergency eye wash and shower is a place where you will be running fast and there you will be going and you'll be taking that material putting in your eyes and that water will be coming like this you'll be washing it continuously and it should come until you manually stop it and it should be able to remove all the things it should change the angles and everything where all the things are uh, possible same goes for the shower also the shower should be maintained at a well um, height so that you can uh, come on top of it and water should come from everywhere it should cover all the body it should come until you um, manually stop it it should uh, keep on coming and cleaning wherever the part of the body has got burns it, fo it should focus more on that and from the part of incident where the burn happened till that area of the shower it should be uh, free from the blockages everyone should be able to go because if it is in the eyes you can't be able to see where you are going at that time it should be free of any obstacles like that one you should go okay these are the key points just remember these things and for more information go through it same things whatever i mentioned just it's mentioned with some values here like how much centimeter should be there should not remember the centimeter and all you just have to common sense what is the thing happening that you have to remember okay and some temperature things also given that also you can go through it okay like normal temperature should be there obviously very hot water who will put when it's a burn safety shower is also there you can go through it the same thing location about the location what i told you you should not be having any obstacles it should be at a place where everyone i uh, there is a lot of space they should not be congested somewhere and should have water spaces tightly installed and when the person comes you should automatically switch on it should not like the expect the person who has got something in his eyes to come and uh, on like this no it should not happen like that it should automatically happen flush away all the hazardous and chemical that can cause injury that was about the uh, safety shower and the eye shower very super important question for example of you moving on we have the next question which is explain safety thinking investigation and policy of the company so what is safety thinking thinking how to implement safety is called safety thinking investigation investigating policy of the company there is a company's policy that is called policy of the company so what all uh, the things you need to keep in mind i love this how they have put the statements what can go wrong watch and identify how big the consequences can be how often will it occur what is the remedy what we should do how to prevent the occurrence these questions answer yourself right in the answer script that's all what equipment has failed during the investigation you should assume what equipment has failed what material has leaked which people could have performed better and how this thing can be avoided in the future what is the purpose of the operation involving the purpose of accident safety policy on objective of the company the when a person enters a company he will be given with some set of regulations and the rules so that he follows and be safe in the company or the industry if it is dealing with uh, any chemicals okay so those things are only written here and the people who are responsible they should make sure some things okay that is also a separate question i guess so safety thinking uh, of the uh, about the employee giving them training awareness and all possible uh, things that can happen or go wrong that should be made aware for them and you should use personal equipments to make yourself safe those things are there okay 
and then we have the next question which explains safety loss and prevention control so safety loss and prevention control if this question comes it is a responsibility of a group of people if this people is there they are responsible for the people under them these are responsible for the people under them these are responsible for for whom obviously the people under them so everyone is responsible for some other person for them what all they have to take the measures okay so i have just summarize all the measures this is valid for all of them okay you need not memorize separately any of them they ask you have to write the same thing okay so who all the managers can be occupational manager department head line manager manager first line supervisor and safety manager hr officer maintenance manager purchase manager and quality assurance manager manager assisting uh, job to the contractor security manager officer workman three things manager officer workman employee and um one more was there department head that's all this four kind of question can come but for all of them you have to write the same thing because everyone is having the same thing just at different levels what are the things let's quickly go through it periodically update periodically review the safety policy ensure the accidents and the dangers are cases are pro uh, promptly handled properly provide and enforce safety comply with the recommendation provide appropriate safety measures familiarize themselves with the company's regulations and uh, assist in setting up the environment and maintaining the policies all the machine should be working very well that should be checked and make sure that it is uh, not giving any harm or damage all employees should use personal pro protective equipment all should be made aware and given the training in case of some emergency what happens and what are the things you need to follow so that the hazards does not happen much frequently those all training should be given that are the responsibilities for every person under them means if this person is there uh, this person has the responsibility for making sure this for the level under him okay next we have the checklist for the lpg and cng what are the checklist is how can lpg and cng be used in the most efficient manner lpg is liquid petroleum gas for that the location spacing should be good mechanical integrity should be there it should be tightly fixed fitting should be checked piping should be checked just imagine a cylinder all things are there underground piping is there and hydraulic reveal uh, relief valve flexible connection should be there and fire precaution should be there loading and folding facilities are there maintenance examination operational procedure and training all these things what you can write in your own words then next we have the natural gas and um, cng so it is a natural gas which is used for the domestic heating and uh, industrial purposes it is easily transported also it is a very nice gas its level of toxic is very less and it can be used uh, in much more places okay so what are the safety aspects it is a mixture of hydrocarbons okay and it is uh, has the flammability uh, in the range of event leakage also if it gets leaked what happens is it will just get mixed with the air it will not happen anything okay in case of event leakage it will mix with the atmospheric air and disperse it is lighter than the air as compared to lpg a uh, large quantity is used in the liquefied form and 20 to 30 days you can uh, use it okay so these are the uh, very few common key points you can write for this what are the safety precautions if you are using it for vehicles if you are using cng for vehicles make sure that your cylinders and kit certificate is ready you have the appropriate cng with you do not try to source the kit components uh, separately otherwise you will not um, merge with each other okay and then we have cng with the parked and service repair application uh, repaired inside the garages following the conditions observed and make sure like whatever you do it should be under the safety rules and regulations and then we have the periodical inspection and test schedules okay like the cng should be well maintained its certificate should be there you should uh, handle it properly okay yeah. then the last one is uh, i guess it's the last uh, no no i don't think so it's the last one anyways uh, let's have a look write a short note on safety audit and risk assessment safety audit means what what all you need to uh, make safe how do you make it safe a risk assessment involve what is the risk involved fire equipment the fire hose cabinet extinguisher standby system sprinkle system all these things should be well maintained and working fire alarm and fire panel because if these things do not work you might not be able to detect the fire or even if fire comes you might be a victim of that egress route c f e f h okay i have to remember f e f h all the fire equipment should be well maintained egress route means if fire happens how do you escape from it fire hazards you should be well aware and you should know how to uh, uh, get yourself safe from it and h means housekeeping it should be very clean area should be clean otherwise the fire can be catching very easily risk assessment means what you'll be uh, um thinking and evaluating what are the risks involved because unless we involve uh, unless we 
try and see what are the risk involved we cannot make something more better right so risk is necessary you have to assign uh, assess the risks uh, involved then you have to do some programs or training or uh, buy some equipments which, which can handle those risks very well like what is the assign, uh, assessment it is an overall process of estimating the magnitude of risk whether the uh, risk is tolerable or not whether it is required a special um, treatment or not okay so risk control action plan is a plan which uh, consists of how to handle the risk in case of risk happens so it should consist the following things the program should consist of work activities identify hazards work activity should be very visible it should identify some hazards and determine the risk level how risky it is access the risk level prepare a plan and then uh, execute the plan simple see what is the risk evolve uh, evaluate it what is the risk involved make some measures for it and after you have done that execute it so that's all for the module 5 make sure you learn all these questions very well and if you like this video and uh, found this video helpful make sure hit the like button subscribe to my channel for more videos like this and thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one